everyone, it's Fox from ModelMakingGuru.com here and welcome to the first part in a new video build series. And for those of you who've been asking for ages, yes, I am going back to doing non-Gumpler. Yes, I'm still going to be doing Gumpler builds, which is what I've kind of become known for. Uh, but it's about time I got back into the world of real, proper glue kits. I'm not quite sure if I've still got the skills because it's been about two years. So this could be interesting. We shall find out. Uh, this is the first part of a new video build series being filmed for my very good friends at emodels.co.uk. Uh, we are going to be building, what are we going to be building? They've supplied this kit for me, so this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing, yes, Ford Transit Van Mark II. Those of you in the UK who grew up in the 1970s and 1980s will recognize this puppy. Um, I still will one day do a Mark I because I think they're just the best looking ones. But this is the Italeri 124 scale Ford Transit Mark II. Um, I have a quick look at the box. This is the boring bit where we just show you the box. Quite a nice big box. Uh, there's some random pictures of some Volkswagens, other kits they do because, because once you build a Transit you want to build a Volkswagen. Uh, lots of information. A little bit of history here. Transit is a light commercial vehicle series produced since 1953 by Ford Germany and Ford UK and conceived for European market. Conceived for European market. Hmm. The European market. Let's just move on. Uh, front engine of these vehicles allows to have a lower loading bed, which eases the loading process. Anyway, the very first Transit was produced in 1965 by the Berber and it carries on. It's good, interesting. Not quite ever seen um, slightly ropey English on the Italeri kit before, or maybe I've just never noticed. Good stuff. I like it when you get slightly ropey English on non-UK manufacture kits or non-English manufacture kits. So this is it. It's 124 scale. Uh, we are going to be doing something a bit unusual with this. Uh, this is going to be filmed for, for my YouTube channel, obviously, and for the guys at emodels.co.uk. So if you're watching from my channel, hello, it's not a Gundam. I know. What, what can this possibly be and how can this possibly work if it's not a Gundam? More my followers are like, add glue? What, what's glue? Uh, if you're on the eModels channel, then hello. Um, we're going to be doing a, uh, an in interesting build of this. Uh, a lot of my followers have asked me to do uh, various things, uh, many of which aren't actually reproducible on film. Um, but we have been asked a few times to do tutorials on how to do rust kind of effects and also a bit on how to do dioramas. So you know what? I'm going to do both. I'm going to do rust and dioramas. The plan, and if you know me, my plans change every five minutes and this probably end up being pink with Hello Kitty stickers on it. Uh, the plan is, this is going to be uh, a knackered, battered, abandoned, rusted, forgotten, just, it's going to be a Mark II Transit if you saw it today and it had been sat in a field for the last 20 years. I'd, something like that basically we're going to make it just absolutely destroyed we're going to just make it like an abandoned van uh, we're going to be using a number of different techniques uh, to get the rust and the chipped paint effect and all that kind of stuff maybe a little bit of custom work I'm debating whether to have the bumper hanging off I don't know yet I'm still planning how I'm going to do it uh, and we are going to set it in a diorama uh, I've got no idea about the diorama. I haven't even begun to plan that. I just, you, my followers will know, I don't plan stuff. I just make it up on the fly and it usually works out okay. And if it doesn't, I just cover it up with weathering. Shh. It's a big secret. Big model making secret. If you do weathered models, it's a good way of hiding up your goofs. So uh, let's get this box open and we'll have a look inside. Um, and then that's going to do it for this episode because it's going to be a quick unboxing and a quick look over and how we're going to look at how we're going to plan it and what i'll try and do as well is make some more sentences that actually make sense because that one was terrible uh if you know me again you'll know i don't plan what i say i just talk off the cuff and it's usually i'll shut up next bit okay so the box is open let's have a look at what we get inside shall we we have the main body of the vehicle quite nice and sizable actually quite looking look at the size of that uh, we have now some of you may have already seen a bit of an unboxing of this on my patreon channel so apologies it's the same thing again but only patrons have seen that so hey no big loss now let's get the knife of cutting where is the knife 
knife safety don't stab yourself i've come to have a reputation for stabbing myself silly on video so do expect blood loss at some point during this build uh, on a recent live stream i managed to stab myself in the thumb and i couldn't believe it it's a classic like somebody on xbox live forgets to take the headset off when they go for a whiz i was like dude you just went for a wee didn't you he went yeah i realize you were all talking about me and there's the first cut yet yeah. i'm gonna have to go and get a plaster now ow and then the next day dropped my knife and stabbed myself in the leg and the day after that i dropped my airbrush needle in the same place on my leg that i stabbed myself the day before yeah i'm not good with sharp things so let's get all these bags open Right, so it didn't take long to open up all the uh, four sprues. Um, it's actually a joy to have a kit where there's basically four sprues and about 35 parts after coming off Gumpler with like 8,000 parts. I don't think we'll be having lots of hedgehogs of things on sticks for this build. So let's start with the main, the main uh, body shell. Uh, nice and sizable, like I said, it's really quite big. I'm quite looking forward to this. Uh, this door doesn't open, sadly, but that's not a problem. Hole for the rear tailgate door driver and passenger doors uh, yeah I'm liking the detail on this now I've never actually built uh, this will be my first Italeri kit oh, well sort of I did do um, yeah, yes I know this means admitting I built a Ravel kit and I have built a few Ravel kits recently but we won't talk about those um, I did build the Ravel Star Wars Landspeeder and I used the uh, 124th truck stop kit from Italeri, which is basically lots of little accessories and toolkits and things and buckets and ladders and stuff if you're making a model truck and you want to set it in a truck stop and it's got you want to put big chrome exhausts on your truck and it's got a little fat driver figure and things like that so i have used those but this will be my first Italeri actual kit i think since i was like maybe a kid i probably built something oh i think i built i built an opal blitz of theirs many 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 years ago before half of you were even born way back in the early 80s when this was a new truck uh, and that wasn't very good but that was like 30 years ago uh, this looks really cool though this looks like nice and crisp got really nice detail on it uh, door handles are molded in eee, that's a pain uh, that's gonna make well, it's not gonna be hard it's just gonna be enough to paint them carefully uh, I would have preferred them to be separate um, but this is not a, a high-end kit it's not a 500 part um, you know 50 or 60 quick kit. Uh, it's a nice. Uh, it's almost like a beginner kit. It's quite nice It's nice and detailed. It's not too complex So yeah, but it would have been nice if the handles were separate, but we can work with that. It's no problem They have got separate windscreen wipers, which is the most important thing in the world For that I am grateful uh, So yeah, really nice. I'll stop moving this around because it's probably really distracting We're gonna have some fun. There's lots of nice deep panel lines Which will be perfect for some pin washes later on to just suggest real gunk and grime in there uh, we may or may not have a door open. I don't know. I mean, I might do it possibly with, if I do it with the tailgate open, we can put some junk in the back. I'll get some 124 scale detritus. Uh, so that's that part. What else do you get? Obviously, you get the interior uh, f floor bed for the inside back, uh, which is white, bizarrely, uh, on the white sprue, not on the black sprue, but there you go. Uh, that's just to go inside. You've got the inside of the rear tailgate and the outside. This, this is bringing back so many memories. So many memories of old transit vans when I was a kid. I was about to say so many memories of old trannies, but yeah, but let's not go there. Uh, there's going to be lots of tranny jokes. I'm sorry, there will have to be. Uh, outside the UK, you may not get that. But for those outside the UK, the kind of colloquial slang term for a transit is a tranny or a tranny van. And obviously tranny has a completely different meaning uh, nowadays. So yes. So we're going to make a knack old tranny. Let's just get that out of the way now. Move on from that one. Uh, also, apologies if you can hear lots of construction work. Uh, bizarrely, every time I film a video series for, for e-models, there's one of my neighbours is doing some kind of construction work and they're building an extension next door. They had the radio on this morning. It was like 8,000 decibels and it was all Christmas songs. And I woke up and I was like, oh my God. Thankfully, they turned it off now. So you don't have to listen to that. I couldn't have recorded, you see, because it would be copyright music and that will get this pull from YouTube. Shut up, Fox, you're waffling. Uh, right, so, yes, so, you can see here the hinge device for the door, which is quite nice, actually. 
Uh, often with these kind of things, you just get like a little T-bar or something, and they just go, eh, it's, it's a hinge, whatever. Uh, but this looks more like, it's not spot on, but it looks more like an actual hinge you get in an actual van door. I can hear the, because they're always squeaky and clunky when you used to open these things. Uh, so yeah, more detailing on here, really nice, little grooves and lines around the edge of the door. This is looking pretty sweet, actually. I'm quite impressed with this. Hmm. I'm quite impressed with this. Uh, then we've got two black sprues, uh, basically for your interior cockpit details, your bumpers and the grills and things like that. Uh, we have, okay, two dash, oh, I see. Ah, I've just noticed, two dashboards, right-hand drive, the correct side to have the steering wheel, and then some nonsense foreign version where it's on the wrong side of the car. So we'll obviously be using the correct, the correct side, because having the driver on the right-hand side is the correct way to drive a car. I've just alienated everybody outside the UK. Hooray! I shall go and apply to Top Gear. No, not Top Gear. Uh, the Grand Tour for a job. Uh, yep, so you've got a dashboard. I'm waffling, aren't I? Sorry, it's one of those days. Uh, you do get the underside of the engine. Uh, you don't appear to get the upper side of the engine. The, the, the bonnet, I think, does the bonnet? No, the bonnet's pre-moulded. So there's no, there's no engine compartment to build, but you do get the underside. So we can have some fun putting gunk and weathering on that. Uh, you've got some simple parts for chassis and axles and so on. Interior door parts, again, with the handles moulded on, which is a bit of a pain, but we can paint around that. And bits for the bumper and the grille. Uh, seats. Yep, they look pretty accurate. I remember seats like those. The two and the one -er. Used to fight over who had to sit on the M1, because that was always... Obviously, when you are a kid, you weren't the driver, so you'd sit on one of these double seats. And if you were lucky, you got this one, where there's a bit of leg, a bit more arm room because you've not got the door there. If you've got this one, you were the poor sucker that got squashed against the door and you, you, that was it. And if they had the window open, because it was hot in the summer, because we didn't have any kind of you know, air conditioning in the 1980s, it was basically window open or not, going down the motorway, at, well, it's a transit van, let's say 55, uh, you'd have the window open, you'd get all the wind and creatures flying into your face and you'd be like, oh, why am I sat on this one? So if you're lucky, you got that one. If you're unlucky, you got that one. Memories, you see. Uh, don't know what that is. Looks interesting. Hmm, not sure what that is. We'll find out. Uh, then we get. Now I'm trying to see. We get, we get the hubcaps. Foot th outside at th wheels. I'm hoping. One, two, three, four, four. Why do you get five? I'm hoping these are supposed to represent the wheels without hubcaps. Because what I want to do for this build, because it's going to be weathered. Obviously, I don't want the hubcaps on because that would look a bit weird. So I'm hoping these are the wheel hubs, but as if they've not got the hubcap on. I can't remember what these to look like. I, I've got a Fiesta now. It's a modern 10-year-old well, Fiesta, and I kind of know what the, the wheels look like. It's when you get the space saver wheel and you take the hub off, and you get that kind of battered old... I mean, mine looks battered anyway. Kind of looks like that, so I'm hoping that's what they are because I don't want to have the hubs on. That would just look weird. I could always have these, like in the back, like they've just been thrown in. Because the, the, if I remember rightly, I know modern day cars, it's, they're often plastic, they're not metal. So these might just be like silver plastic. I'll have to do some research. Um, so I'd have to make them look appropriately battered. Uh, but I could have them in the back. We're all junk and detritus. Uh, what's the next? Sprue. Sprue. You got the underside of the body. Uh, again, fairly simple, nothing too complex. You'll have a few bits of that chassis to put underneath. You're not going to seal it there anyway, but we're going to weather it and make it look battered and abandoned and forgotten. So it's, it's not a biggie that you can't see much to say. It's going to be on the ground, so we're not really going to see under here anyway. Uh, steering wheel, got the things, not sure what they're for, we'll find out. Th exhaust. Do -do -do. I mean, basically, let's just be honest, we're going to paint a lot of this rust colours, so <laughs> not going to be a complicated colour scheme for the base bare under parts. Who were matron? Uh, and lots of little doodads. Uh, the mirrors. Um, I have noticed the mirrors. You have to kind of paint them silver. Uh, I know there's. It, it's not. It's not an expensive, sort of high level kit. So you're going to get that. But I mean, it would have been nice to get. See the one thing with Gumpler, you'll know me. Uh, I hate stickers, but I don't mind foil stickers. The one thing I think, place where I think model manufacturers could embrace very simply as stickers is putting things like stickers for wing mirrors because if you make them 
like foil stickers that are reflective it looks much better than if you just paint the sticker uh, just paint the mirror silver because it's, it's not reflective even if you put a gloss varnish on it so yeah it's a shame but we'll, we'll work with that um, but yep yeah, liking the look of this all the details are nice and crisp uh, not seeing any flash I don't think uh, no not that I can see yes 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 separate windscreen wipers I cannot tell you because it's a long time since I've made a car or a van it's since I was a kid and in the old days when I were a lad when I were a lad and we used to eat gravel and live in a box um, you'd always get the windscreen would have the wipers molded into it and that's a clear part and that would be the worst thing in the world would be trying to paint windscreen wipers on a clear part because if you get it wrong you ruin the whole model it's ruined just throw it away burn it it's ruined um, so to get these separate yes we may have not separate door handles, but they get all the points back for giving me separate windscreen wipers. Thank you very much, Italeri. Uh, one more sprue is the clear sprue. Now I've kept the bag for this. Dead simple. Windscreen, back windows, side windows, tail lights, and the like. Quite nice. That'll be getting probably a dunk in some clear varnish just to make it look even more glassy. And then what I'll do is I'll weather the living poop out of it so it'll look terrible. So I. Mm, do I need to clear varnish these? Probably not actually. Probably not. I mean, maybe the interior ones. I don't think I need to do much on the windscreen because I'm going to make it look dirty and abandoned. So the last thing you want is a nice, super shiny, clear windscreen. I have been looking into how to put things like cracks and so on into the windscreen. Now, I haven't found so far, uh, again, because I haven't made vehicle kits like this since I was a kid. So I have no experience in making commercial vehicles or cars or vans. I've got to try and find a way, if I can, of putting cracks into this green screen. If I can't, I won't. I'll just leave it like this and make it look really filthy. If I can find a way, I'll try and put some cracks in it. Now, I've found ways of doing things like smashed windscreen, so you just have the glass around the edge. But that's not what I want, because then I'd have to... I want it to look like it's you know got cracks, but not smashed. Otherwise, I've got to then weather the interior and give it bushes and plants and things inside, which will just look really weird. So I want it to look maybe crack so I've got to research how to do that I'm not sure yet I've not found a convincing way to do it I may not find a convincing way to do it so if anybody can think of a way that that's, that works to do cracked glass uh, let me know put it in the comments in the on the video uh, or on my, on my channel or the e-models channel uh, or send me a message or put comment on Facebook on my Facebook page uh, and let me know because I'm open to all ideas. I probably won't do a crack, but if I can find a way, I will. Um, clear parts, keep them in the bag. These other bits don't care, but keep these parts in the bag. Although again, I'm going to make them look scruffy. It just means I'm not going to get them all scratched in such a way it looks really weird. So I want to keep them clear now because anything I want to do to them, I want to do them through choice. So, And then we have the decals now. Oh, sorry, we have the tyres. I'm not taking these out because I will lose them. But you get four and a spare, which is why I'm thinking those are wheel hubs. Which is quite good then, because you get five wheels, but you get four hubcaps. Because the spare wheel, the space saver wheel, as we call it nowadays, doesn't have a hubcap. So they probably are the hubcaps. Yes, excellent. Um, yep, nice thick, squishy rubber tyres. Um, I was looking into a way to make these look flat and deflated. Now, there's a few ways you can do it. Some people just heat them up and bend them. I don't like that look it just looks like it's been heated up and squished uh, I have found one way of doing it uh, I found a chap online who s uses a specific tool to scrape out inside the bottom of the tire because it's hollow to scoop out the inside so it's really really thin and then he heats it to to squish it so it kind of compacts and looks like a flat tire and the end results are fantastic it looks like a flat tire not just like a melted and squashed tire Unfortunately, he doesn't tell you what the tool he uses is called, so I can't go on Google and search for a curvy, bladed, scrapey thing, or whatever he calls it. He said, I found this tool, it's this tool, I found it's a curvy, bladed, scrapey thing, and then he just carries on and he doesn't tell you. So I can, I can know what it looks like, but I can't search for something by just looking at what it looks like. So, uh, might not do that, I don't know. Not sure. I've not come across any other satisfactory ways to make tyres look flat. You could sand it flat there, so it looks really thin, but it just looks like you've sanded it flat. So it might not have flat tyres. Maybe this van is knackered and battered, but whoever owns it still kind of wants to use it. Maybe it'll have no tyres on. 
be up on bricks. We'll find out. Again, I haven't planned the diorama yet. You see, I don't plan stuff. I don't. I am not organised. Don't assume for one minute. Somebody mentioned on my YouTube channel today. They said, they said because uh, I said I wasn't organised. They went, oh, you're very organised. Otherwise, you'd never get these videos done. I said, no, I'm totally not organised. I'm just very, very good at making it look like I know what I'm doing. So there are the tyres. Lots of nice crisp detail. I can't really show you because they're in the bag. I'm not going to take them out, but because I will lose them. Uh, but nice detail on there. And then last of all, the decals, water slide decals. Uh, coming again from Gunplay, it's nice to actually get a kit with water slide decals and not stickers and transfers. Uh, yeah, you get loads and loads and loads of uh, license plates. You get nationality stickers, GB, Italy. Uh, S, I assume is Sweden, maybe? Belgium, uh, Germany. E, I'm not sure where E is. Where's E? Where's E? And F, well, F will be France. An L for the Nederlander. D is that another Germany one? Wait, DK is DK German? DK is not Germany. Where's oh Denmark? Uh -huh. Hello, oh, do you know? Don't know where A is. F for France. DK Denmark. B Belgium. They have to be red. They have to be different, don't they? They've got no hills, so they have to have something different. Uh, Belgium. I'm assuming that's Switzerland or. Spain? No, that'd be an E. Oh, well, it's Spain. It's Spaniard. Hello. S, I don't, I'm assuming that's Switzerland. Italy, obviously, best country in the world. Uh, Germany, Niederlande. I don't know what, uh, which one was it? I didn't know. Oh, no, all of them now. Okay, that's cool. Oh, no, A, I don't know where A is. Where's A? Andalusia? That's not a country, is it? I don't know. A. Where's A? What European country is A? I in the comments tell me because I'm being a special I'm being an idiot where's A I can't remember where I, it'll come to me like after I've finished filming this video now the strange thing is and God love them for doing this because it's the best thing ever they give you all these different like different European formats of license plate you've got the old 1980s British uh, you've got uh, I don't know what the other ones are obviously there's French and German and they probably already correspond with these um, but then they give you all the markings for the Ford itself the Ford mark is the dashboard. But then, for no specific reason whatsoever that I can discern, they give you one option to make it look like a battered old 1980s British gas fan. Which is of no relevance at all to any of these other countries I would expect. I'm pretty sure you didn't have British gas whizzing around the Netherlands or France or Spain or Germany. So I love this. Of all the things they could have done, of all the different things that all these countries would identify with, they give you one and it's British gas. I mean, how cool is that? How That's the best thing. So I'm tempted to use this livery just because it's so funny they've put this in there. Um, now, I did look at different colour schemes for this van. Uh, at first, I thought I'll do it as a, a British telecom van. However, I did some research uh, and it would mean getting decals made up or getting um, vinyl templates made up so I could spray the British the, the British Telecom logo is on because in the 80s it was British Telecom or still was it British Telecom was it B I can't remember anyway it was BT but I looked into it because my memories were you know rosy tinted with the memories of youth and Indian summers and all that kind of stuff in the 80s uh, and basically British Telecom in the 80s their logo sucked this is their logo meh that's really boring it's just like really is that it and the vans were just yellow just yellow all over and it was like oh that's really boring so I decided against that because the logo was boring it was after the kind of Busby era not my mate Busby I mean Busby the British telecom bird <coughs> anybody in the UK from that era will know what that means everybody else will be like what are you talking about so it was beyond that so I couldn't have a Busby on it uh, yeah they, and the other thing is they don't appear to have transits they had Sherpas and box panel vans and other things they didn't have transits so oh well. so British telecoms off the board so yep British gas um, I've been looking into different ways to do this I wanted to try and get the effect where you have say the logo on the van because in those days it would have been vinyl stickers put on the side of the van it still is today actually um, and what I was hoping to I was thinking about doing was having like a bit where some of this has come off and what you get is the, the van itself is, is all matte and not shiny and scratched and scuffed but where the vinyl's peeled off from the logo, of course, the paint underneath will be a slightly different colour because it's not been exposed to the air as much as the rest of the paint around it. So my plan was to 
see if it's possible to get vinyl templates made for this and then pull some of that off afterwards. Uh, sorry, pull some of that off. Talking rubbish. I'm excited about this. Can you tell I'm just talking nonsense? Make some vinyl stickers of these, stick it on. You know, paint the base colour, stick the stickers on, paint the rest over, and then you peel these off again. You've got bits where it's a different colour. But I thought about it, and it's just going to be such an absolute nightmare to do that. Uh, my good friend Tony Fairclough over at Helgen 3.5, uh, who has also done videos for the guys at eModels, he's got access to a vinyl printer, but I think it's going to be too small and fiddly to do that, to be honest. Um, it's going to be too... It's not really going to work, I don't think. So what I might do is just put the decal on, then chip it away once the decal's on, just to have that difference in paint. Or I might just leave it on as if it's not come off and just weather over it. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, so yeah, that's the best thing ever. All these foreign license plates, all these different nationalities, and then they give you one option of a British gas. I mean, that is the best thing ever. The most obscure thing you can think of. I love that. It's hilarious. You've just got a thousand internets. You've just won a thousand internets for that. Uh, and again, I'm going to keep these in the bag. Now, amusingly, you get these decals in a bag that's about that big. There's about four times the length of the decals. So keep your decals in a bag. It just means that they're protected. Same with the clear parts. They're protected. They're not going to get scuffed and scraped. Uh, and there's nothing worse than getting your decals out. And if you want to do a nice clean model and you've got a big scratch across because some parts dragged across it. So keep your decals in the bag. Uh, so that's it. So what is the plan? Like I said, the plan is to rust it, batter it, kill it. Uh, and just make it look old and battered. Um, perhaps make it look like it used to be a British gas fan uh, and then they sold it uh, and somebody bought it and they use it as their own private van now but they haven't perhaps got rid of the livery, they just drive it around like a knackered wreck. Uh, there will be a diorama. Again, I haven't decided yet on the diorama. I'll probably keep it fairly simple. I want it to look abandoned so it might just be, you know, a bit of a concrete flat surface with some grass growing through maybe a wall and some junk lying around but we'll see well i'm gonna as it comes along and i get this thing built and painted we'll start to get a feel for what kind of diorama uh if i can find a 124 scale mattress that will be cool because that can go on somewhere uh, there's, there's always a mattress when you see junk and stuff in abandoned corners of a council estate in the 80s so that's the plan so basically make it look battered beaten so we're going to be Obviously priming and painting, we're going to be using a number of different techniques, possibly. I mean, it'll evolve as I go along. Uh, I, what I'll probably try and do is do the technique of painting the whole thing, the rust colours first, then building up the paint on top uh, in various ways to get the paint looking like it's on top of the rust and it's just coming away. I'll probably do some um, drill work or Dremel work, if you've got a Dremel tool, just to put in some little pock marks and rust holes and things around the places it would normally appear like around the wheel arches and the door sills and down here corners of the doors my car has a rust spot right on the corner of a door so if I can what I might try and do is drill a hole in the corner here if I could do it on camera uh, drill a hole in the corner of the door without going too much around the surround so it looks like the door's just got a little bit taken out of it and we'll put streaking on it because it's 124 scale it's ripe for things like streaking and all other goodness so we'll see we'll see what comes out uh might also i've got a cunning plan for one of the doors uh, if i can mask it off successfully enough maybe have one of these side doors a completely different color like the owner's knackered his side door and he's gone down to the scrapyard uh, and said have you got any old transit doors? He says, yeah, we've got one over there. You can have it. It'll be a fiver. And he, he walks out with a transit door that's probably a completely different colour um, and has, like, a different logo on it. Oh, we'll, we'll figure something out. So that will look cool. You can't do that anymore, you know. You go to a scrapyard nowadays and you're like, hi, I need a wing mirror from our whatever. And they go, yeah, bugger off. And that's, that's all you get. So you, you can't do that anymore. When I was a younger lad, I you know, Mark II Fiesta. I'd go down the scrappies all the time and I'd, I used to drive a basic bog standard bottom of the line Mark II Fiesta 0.002 engine just about had an engine um, it was powder blue it had a knackered engine but the bodywork was perfect um, and it had an XR2 wheel because I went to a scrapyard and said oh I like that that'll do so I had this XR2 wheel with like uh, little holes in the centre part so I could just turn the wheel with my finger like that it's great it had no power at all, it couldn't go up hills. Driving down the Snake Pass was a challenge in, well, endurance more than anything else. 
going down the snake pass in the winter in a little tiny fiesta on tiny wheels no power and you're getting overtaken by every single truck car mobility vehicle people walking just everybody overtook you trees overtaken by trees so yeah the joy of old cars i love old cars so yeah we'll do all kinds of stuff to it uh say so for the diorama not really plan too much i'm gonna do but we'll figure that out i might get this built first and then figure out what to do with the diorama because it'll suggest to me what i need uh, or i might do the diorama at the same time we'll see i don't plan you know that i don't plan so that's going to do it for this episode only a quick introduction with 99 percent pointless waffle like i always do what we've got 26 27 minutes yeah i don't do quick videos um join us for the next one uh, whenever that will be when we will start on the actual build and paint uh, of this puppy uh, thank you so much for watching uh, as always uh, as i said before this is a video for emodels.co.uk uh, they provided this model for me uh, as i always disclose in my uh, third party videos it's not a paid for video i'm not being paid for this i've very generously been provided with this model uh, and that's the extent of it uh, this will be up on emodels channel uh, fairly quickly uh, it will go up on my channel these video builds will go up on my channel usually one or two weeks afterwards uh, so stay tuned for the next one on my channel uh, if you're already following me on youtube brilliant if not it's on youtube.com forward slash model making guru uh, i'm also on twitter at model making guru and facebook is just facebook.com forward slash model making guru uh, go to the, visit the guys at emodels of course it's the uk's best online model retailer absolutely brilliant guys you saw on my channel you'll see a video where i wandered around the other day they're a crazy bunch um give them a shout if you're looking for something they probably got it or they will have it uh, and i always say if they haven't got it you don't need it there's something better available don't worry about it but go along to emodels.co.uk and check them out uh, and obviously hang out on their youtube channel as well where you'll see this and other great builds um ted hawksworth from skipper scale models my good friend uh, you'll have noticed you may have noticed he's building the 148th scale 7c u-boat 148th but just let that sink in. I did one a few years ago and it was 172nd scale and that was three foot. He's doing a 148th scale U-boat. It's the trumpeter kit. It's bigger than France. It's, I joke, he has, he has, a, he has the workshop out in his garden. I, I joke now and say he used to have a garden. Now he just has a very big workshop. So yeah, go on to their channel and just watch, keep your out for videos for that U-boat because it's going to be phenomenal. Ted, that's going to be brilliant. I can't wait to see that. So anyway, yes, uh, do pop along. I will shut up now and go away because I've talked far too much. I really can't do simple videos. I really can't just... This is me and then there's Tony at Helgen35 who also does YouTube stuff. He's just nice and quiet, says a few words. They're always hilarious. I can't do that. I say all the words. So I'm doing it again. I just, I'm going away now. Adios amoebas.